So then in the first week of season two, we posted this video where we explained the current issues with the rank system. Those issues include matchmaking, rank demotion, and many others, but let's focus on the matchmaking one. Today we received a blog post on getting inside their minds on matchmaking in the current competitive system. Before we get into that, I want to point out that this background footage in the background is a 2 minute and 56 second ranked match. As we go over this, I'll explain a little bit more as to why this happened, but let's just go ahead and get right into the blog post. So in this first section, they're kind of explaining what MMR is and how the internal matchmaking rating works. So MMR, as I said just now, is matchmaking rating. And basically, this is a hidden value that none of us can see and only the Blizzard devs know. This value is used, according to them, to create the most fair and balanced matches possible. Now, as I said before, this first game right here is a 2 minute and 56 second ranked match. The reason why this match was so fast is because pretty much our entire team was platinum ranked and the opponents were silver and gold ranked. Now, if you're wondering why this is possible, it's because your outward facing rank, which is like silver, plat, diamond, etc., does not match your MMR, meaning that your MMR and your visual rating can be two entirely different values. The reason why this is an issue is because your MMR is not an absolute value. It can change after even just one game. So after that one game that you play, the game might either see you as a lower or lesser rank. In this situation, me and my friend that I was duo with, we were already on a win streak and then we got paired up against these guys. So clearly it didn't see us as a lower rank but it did happen to see our opponents as higher ranks. It saw their MMR as being equivalent to ours. Now, if their MMR was equivalent, how is it possible that we were able to beat them in under three minutes? If I remember correctly, I think I only die one time and my duo doesn't die at all. This was easily one of the most unfair matches that I think I've ever played. It goes on by saying that your MMR can change even if your own personal skill level doesn't. What this would indicate is that the population around you is either getting better or worse. So if they're getting better and you're staying the same, your MMR is going to decrease. Now, the reason why this is important is because matches are made using only your MMR. They will never use your outward facing rank in order to form matches, which is kind of against the norm when we're talking about any sort of competitive game. So if you're a higher rank than someone on your team and you happen to notice this, just know that it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a worse player than you or anything like that. It just means that their MMR is equal to yours, which is kind of weird. Your MMR and your outward facing rank should always be very similar, if not always, always the same. It goes on by saying, it's important to remember that our teammates are human. We don't always perform the same from game to game or even fight to fight. This inherent variance in our individual performance means that the matchmaker needs the results of many game of as many games as possible to get an accurate representation of your skill. Now, this only makes sense for a multitude of reasons, but let's say just you just happen to have a pop off game or you get paired up against players who literally aren't as good as you, no matter what rank you are then that doesn't necessarily mean that you're like this GM level player because you went 60 and 0 or something. It just means that you are better than the people that you just faced in a previous match or in a previous team fight, etc. So taking it from a longitudinal approach, it does make sense to do it that way. The issue is that the way that the MMR is being calculated right now, it is placing teammates on your team that may not deserve to be on your team or maybe holding your team back. Blizzard actually also acknowledges this and they state, we can't always avoid these type of matches, but we can make them feel better. These matches can often feel imbalanced if they create situations where there's a large disparity in skill within a single role between two teams. For example, and this is important right here, we might match a highly rated tank against a comparably lower rated tank. So even if the overall match is balanced, the competition between tanks can feel very one-sided. Now, why I said this is important and it, the fact that I think this is an issue is because the tank is by far one of the most important roles in the game. Every role is important and everyone needs to be doing their job. But it is very hard for other roles to do their job if the tank can't tank, if they can't create space, and if they're just getting overall diffed by the other tank. If the opposing tank is simply just a better tank than yours, then it's going to be very hard to win, especially if it's a tank that can deal with theirs very well. If that tank doesn't understand counterpicking, if they don't understand positioning or anything like that, you're going to find tank diffs a lot more common. For me, this happens to be the case quite often where I'm actually getting tanks that are just not as good. Me and my duo, we've been saying, why is our, I feel like our tank is always getting diffed? And it just happens to be the case that they're pitting higher rated tanks against lower rated ones, even though the overall team might be better. 
But that's not important if the tank is going to be diffing one or the other. If we can't deal with the enemy tank because our tank doesn't understand how to deal with them, it's going to be very hard overall to just win. Luckily, it does look like they are going to address this. It says, we got some changes coming to the game over the next few months, which will dramatically reduce these disparities. We'll try to find pairs of similarly rated players in each role when making a match. For support and damage roles, we have two slots. Each player will be paired with one player on the opposite team. There will still sometimes be matches with a large range of differently skilled players, but in these cases, the two teams will be more like mirror images of each other. But what this is saying is that let's say that M MMR and outward facing rank were the same thing. They're not, but just for this example, we're going to use it as, as it is. If I'm plat, they're going to try to find another opponent to face me that is also plat in my DPS role. And if my teammate is silver, it's going to try to find an opposing teammate that is also going to be silver. So we'll have basically a plat and a silver versus a plat and a silver. This is just MMR wise. It's not actually how it will be because MMR and outward facing rank are not the same thing. But in this example, that's basically the easiest way to summarize it. But one final thing that I want to point out is that, as I've said before, that the matches seem very unfair. It seems like they are trying to force a 50% win rate. This graph right here depicts the win rate for new players. Before the change, the win rate for new players was somewhere around between 30 and 40%. After this change that they've made to the MMR and how they're going to start their matchmaking, the win rate for new players is roughly around 50 to 60%. Why this is important is because they're basically artificially forcing new players upward in their win rank. Now, if this existed in a vacuum, this wouldn't be a problem. But the issue is that it doesn't exist in a vacuum. It exists against another group of five players, meaning that just because a new player has a lower win rate, it is going to try to stack their team in order to get them a higher win rate, meaning that you may be faced up against a team that is just significantly better than you because you're going up against a team against some players who may have a lower win rate and in order to increase that win rate they have to stack the team my hopes is that once part two of these changes drop that maybe a lot of this will be fixed um, but overall i don't really think that it's healthy to try to artificially create win rates just because a player seems to be winning less in their final thoughts they claim that we're continuing to analyze the data tune values and evaluate more changes to the matchmaker our highest hope is to make a match that feels fun for everyone, even the team that loses, which I think is a really good idea. It goes on, we feel strongly that the best way to achieve this is to make matches that are as fair and balanced as possible. In my opinion, the best way to make the matches as fair and as balanced as possible is to create a matchmaking system that pairs players based on their outward facing rank and not their MMR. But anyway, what do you guys think? If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like, and if you want to see more Overwatch content, smash that sub button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.